And so to put this all into uh, some perspective on how expensive Bitcoin is, um, and this was all as of the 17th of February, of February, you had to do 60 sextillion guesses of the nonce, that's a six followed by 22 zeros, to successfully mine a single block. And no matter how fast your computers are, that takes time, and it also uh, consumes energy uh, to scale that up. It's seven gigawatts of electricity uh, for the Bitcoin network as of roughly the middle of February. That's 20, 20 bips of the world's supply of electricity. That's about as much as all of Switzerland or New Zealand. Um, and yeah, the, biz, the, the network has never been hacked. The wallets have been hacked. The exchanges have been hacked all the time. But the network itself has never been effectively or successfully hacked. Uh, and that's because of all this work. Um, and we know, we have theorems that tell you uh, about the reliability of this network as envisioned in Leslie Lamport's paper. Um, but it is really, really expensive. And it all uh, leads to reality uh, where uh, in operation, the Bitcoin network with all this energy being consumed is only able to process about four transactions per second globally and just compare that with MasterCard, which is up to 65,000 transactions per second. Though, of course, there's a central point of failure. The US dollar and the British pound have been on digital journeys for a long time. Actually, you could argue in many ways that the digital journey of the uh, sterling is far advanced compared to the US dollar, um, but it's been happening since the 50s. Some assets, such as US treasuries, US stocks, have been completely dematerialized. You, public companies don't have share certificates anymore, uh, not, since, not since Hurricane Sandy. I've never seen a US treasury uh, in paper form. They're all in digital or book entry form. Uh, but the dollar still exists in this paper form. And bank accounts, as we've seen, are claims on banks. Um, and that can have all kinds of problems, such as bank runs in a world of fractional reserve banking. They're not claims on the central bank. And so what would you want to see in a digital US dollar? I, mean, I think of Bitcoin and Libra and everything, Ethereum and everything else as interesting researches that are leading us towards intersubjective reality fiat currencies that are completely native. You'd want the currency to be programmable. You want it all to be based on APIs. It would need to balance data to privacy, anonymity, with anti-money laundering and operations would need to be set by the sovereign and by the central bank according to socioeconomic and trade and diplomatic policy, it needs to be nearly instantaneous, it needs to remain under the control of the Fed. I you know, don't fight the Fed, don't take on the central bank. Uh, it preserves the role of the regulated banking system in money creation. It can be used for end-to-end -end financial settlement in retail and wholesale. Uh, this is rather provincial, preserves the dollar status as the global reserve currency. Uh, but certainly, China is making massive efforts to digitize its yuan. And you can be sure um, that one of the goals of, of that uh, plan is to introduce the yuan as an alternate Global reserve currency needs to be resilient, needs to be resistance to, resistant to hacking. It can't have failures like AWS or Google have had in the last few weeks. Um, and it would need to be really the result of a political consensus.